band tradition at Michigan is more than 100 years old. The band program was founded in 1896. When William D. Ravelli came to Michigan in 1935, it charted a new course, not only for the bands at Michigan, but for bands across the country. He had been the director in Hobart, Indiana, and had won consecutive national championships for a contest that used to take place. And he was viewed as the young, up-and-coming Jim Harbaugh of the day, if you will. And by the early 50s, he had the band recognized as one of the top university ensembles of any genre in the country. H. Robert Reynolds was a student under William D. Ravelli in the early 50s. He came here as a freshman and he's told me that he was quite shocked to make the symphony band as a freshman. He was last chair as a freshman and he was uh, played in the symphony band all through his undergraduate years and he got a master's degree and then went out and began his teaching career. So when uh, Dr. Ravelli retired in 1971 and they eventually did the search for a director of bands, uh, Bob was already a shining star in the conducting field so he was a very natural selection to come back and take over the program and stayed until 2001. And all that period of time, the, the band program here, both in the concert hall and in the athletic arena, has been a vital part of what the university has to offer students and the, the greater community at large. When I came to Michigan in 2001, I came in large part because of the legacy of what H. Robert Reynolds and William D. Ravelli had achieved, and it's quite an honor to be part of that. One of the concepts that I try to bring to the symphony band rehearsals specifically is what I call the laboratory of professionalism. So no matter where you are as a player, you can practice being a professional. You can practice being on time. You can practice being dedicated. You can engage with the people around you and learn from each other. So I try to approach every rehearsal at a very high professional level. One of the reasons I'm able to do that is the quality of students who come through the door. Professor Haithcock, he teaches us not only to be accountable for ourselves, but accountable for the people around us and to always give respect to the music and our collaborators. On the very first day that I was in symphony band my sophomore year, I got to hear the memorable speech that Professor Haithcock always gives us, talking about the semester and what he expects from us and what we can expect from him. We listen so intently you can hear a pin drop in the room and from that we feel very honored to be a part of that ensemble. This particular concert features a lot of repertoire that has historical significance to the University of Michigan Symphony Band. The works that Professor Reynolds will conduct are very particularly specific to his experience at Michigan. The Bach Chorale Prelude, How Fervent Is My Longing, is in memory of Leslie Bassett who died last February. And Professor Bassett had an enormous influence on the history of the University of Michigan School of Music. Professor Bassett wrote Sound Shapes and Symbols as a gift to H. Robert Reynolds upon his taking the director of band's job. He told Bob during the interview, if you take this job, I'll write you a piece. So he delivered. And Professor Reynolds was in Mr. Bassett's theory class as an undergraduate, so they had a long and special relationship. So when the symphony band had the opportunity to tour China in 2011, we wanted to represent the living composers that are on the faculty, and it made perfect sense in all of our minds to engage Bright Shang to write a piece that would be specific for this tour. So he was able to craft a band version of his Shanghai Overture, which we played all over China, and it's a pleasure to come back to it. And in this particular program, it serves as a marker of the history of the symphony band touring internationally, the famous 1961 Russia tour, and then uh, Professor Reynolds took the band to do a premiere of a Stockhausen opera in 1984, and they also toured Europe. Matt Ernst will be playing an old Herbert L. Clark turn of the century cornet solo. Herbert L. Clark was the cornet soloist for the Sousa Band for many years and was famous for his technical prowess. Matt was a student in the symphony band during my first couple of years here, and he's had great success as a professional trumpet player and now principal trumpet in the Milwaukee Symphony. So it's to be a real pleasure to have Matt Ernst back with the symphony band. This concert will conclude with David Maslanka's Symphony No. 4. Symphony No. 4 is based in large part on the traditional doxology tune that everyone knows. It's used as a symbol of gratitude and joy. When we think about the 200 year history of the institution, we think about all that has come before us, and we think about all that will go forward. It seems to me that this particular piece, which features the wonderful Fries Memorial Organ and Hill Auditorium, 
was to be symbolic of both our gratitude and our opportunity, and we'll be delighted to present it to everyone who attends.